Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Godot Tower Defense Tutorial. In this episode, we're going to take a little step back, something a little easier. We're going to look at how we can make it so that we can start earning money from our aliens and how that money can actually be translated into actually being able to put these turrets down. At the moment, you can see now it's grayed out, so I can't just keep placing turrets down like we did before. I haven't particularly tuned this very well, so you can see that it's, it's we've got plenty of turrets, and I can put another one down, like you see, that's all the way over. I've already got three turrets on the go. But you can certainly have a play around with this, play around with the numbers and the values and see how much they're all worth so before i start there's a couple of things i'd like to say number one is a huge thank you to all of the people that have subscribed watched given me feedback i had a stretch goal in november to reach 750 subscribers by the end of the year and i've just passed 1100 it is incredible i don't know what to say other than thank you so so much uh, um, i will continue to put out godot tutorials into the new year uh, there seems to be a huge momentum for godot right now everybody seems to be putting tutorials out which is absolutely great some really good ones not as good as mine obviously but uh, some pretty good ones nonetheless um secondly there was something i wanted to address about an issue that i had put into my health bar tutorial if you haven't had a chance that seems to be particularly popular so if you get a chance do go take a look at that i'm going to try and put out another tutorial like that for particle effects but in that tutorial i talked about how you could reduce the uh, health bar but what i hadn't realized is that if i if i quickly show you here i've got a scene where had i not made the updates uh, um, this is what it would have looked like uh, if you just purely followed my health bar tutorial along what's going to happen is these guys are all going to spawn but when you start shooting at them they're all going to share the same uh, color scheme uh, as each other and uh, of course because I'd only created one health bar it, it, no, it wasn't uh, particularly difficult to spot and it goes kind of a bit of a weird state look you can see it's sort of going yellow and then red and I think it'll probably go to green again and get all confused it's an easy fix very very easy indeed the reason this is happening is because they are all sharing the same um, uh, gradient um, uh, in the fill here in the fill, uh, star box flat so all you need to do is go to the progress bar itself and under the resource click on local to scene and that will fix the problem for you if I go back here now and we run it again you'll see that that actually will work um, let's just try that out, make sure it does work And the next one will come along. There we go. You can see that one's green. They're not interfering with each other at all. So there we go. So that's good stuff. So let's go about then creating our uh, scenario and, and code for having this cash window up here and being able to drag based on whether we've got enough money or not. Okay, let's do that. Let's close that one down. Okay, so if I bring up the control uh, 2D for the uh, main window here, what we can see is we've got our activity button down here and our start wave. So I'm just simply going to add another label here. Um, we will add a child node label. Um, I, sh I should apologize if you haven't guessed, my voice is quite deep at the moment. I have COVID. Um, yeah, I managed to catch it a few days ago and it's been going on for a while. I feel a lot better now, but it has been a bit of a, <laughs> bit of an, an, an annoyance, um, particularly as I'm supposed to be going out this weekend, but there we go, kind of everything. I, I, I feel a lot better. So if you do uh, have COVID out there, stay safe. But uh, yeah, apologies if my voice is sounding deep or a bit throaty, or if I, indeed if I start coughing <laughs> halfway through. Uh, so yeah, let's add, let's add a label here. We'll just create that here. Okay, and we'll, what we'll do is we'll just call this um, cash, cash label, like so. And we'll make it span across the entire section. Like no, sorry, the top one there like that. And here we'll just we'll just put um, cash um, dollar zero, right? and that's obviously going to change immediately when we go into our um, into it, when it actually runs horizontal alignment. I want that to be center. I'm guessing I want to put a theme override of a font size slightly bigger than that. Let's pick 30 to, 32, if we, and then click on here. Okay, is that better? That's a bit better. Okay, let's have a quick look at that. Yeah, that looks, that looks fine. Okay. Um, obviously, we don't want, we don't want it to be a static label like that. We want actually um, to be updating all the time. So what we'll do in our main here in our script is we will have a new variable. Doesn't really matter where we put it. Uh, var cache, and we'll say we'll just start with a hundred. In fact, what we'll actually do is we'll put at export var. Okay, so we can control what that is what that is at startup. Right? And now in our process function which I don't actually think we have here yet so surprisingly because it's all been done by states but what we'll do here is a func underscore process we will say um, control no dollar control isn't it forward slash there we go dollar control slash cash label uh, dot text equals um, cash 
dollar, and then we'll do percent D. We'll do the old, the replacement system, and then we'll say uh, percent cash. Right? Okay, and that, in theory, if we run that now, that should update every frame. Possibly a bit overkill, uh, but there we go. That's keeping it up to date every frame. That's a very very good start. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to have our activity button here, um, which is which is the drag and drop feature that we've created. Be able to control uh, how that all looks. So let's take a look at doing that now. Okay, so at the top, what we'll do is we'll include a um, a cost. Let's just put it here. So we'll, what should we call this? We'll call this uh, at export var um, activity cost. Type int, and we'll set it to, to sixty or something like that for now. Okay, and the way what we're going to do here is we're going to have a reference back to main, um, and we will use that to. Um, to define whether or not uh, the activity itself, the activity button is enabled. So this is going to be a little bit funky. But the, the, I've been thinking about using things like signals and stuff like that, but actually what we can probably do here uh, is, is quite simply just say, um, and this is going to be a little bit, I'm going to get this around the wrong way. We're going to say disabled equals, um, what was it? So what did I call it? Activity cost. is greater than um, dollar. No, in fact, what we'll do, no, no, let's, let's get a, a reference to main. So let's just drag that in here like so. Okay, so we'll say, and then we'll get um, uh, main dot cash. Okay, I think that's, I think that's going to work because I, I, let's just give it a go. So I never can quite remember if it's, it's going to be, I don't like the fact that it's disabled equals. I think that should be enabled equals. Let's just have a quick, let's see if that works. Okay, it's enabled at the moment. Um, that's okay. But let's just try less than and just see if that actually goes disabled. Yes. Okay. So I think I think we're okay here. That's a good start, right? So that 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 means that means that we are uh, doing the right thing here. Um, and then at the very bottom on the on button up, what we want to do is make sure that we reduce the cost, the cash, by the cost of this activity. So uh, if is here we go. It's exactly it. if is valid location. We'll say main dot cash minus equals um, activity cost. Okay, and that might do it for this bit. Let's have a look. So I'm expecting two things to happen here. Number one, when I drag it, it should place it and it should reduce the cache. Let's find out. It has done all those things. We can see here it's reduced the cache amount, it's placed it and it's now disabled that, which is exactly what we're after. That's a good start, isn't it? So the only thing we need to do now is have, have the enemies uh, increment that cache as they get destroyed. So what we need to do is we need to go to our uh, resource GD for our enemy settings GD here and we'll add a new value to them we'll add an export var um, I will say value um, destroy value and we'll make it 20 I, I haven't played with these values. let's make it 30 okay um, I've type int as well that, well that's the default value and then if we go into our resources we've got a couple of resources here haven't we basic enemy settings uh, so that's the basic enemy. We'll make that. We'll, make, we'll keep that at thirty, and we'll make the power enemy. We'll make that forty. All right. And then what we can do in our um, enemy, where enemy O one here, is we'll need to get. A, this is going to be a bit trickier because these are uh, are spawned. Um, they're going to be a little bit trickier to uh, define back to the um, original. Uh, root node so I think what we'll need to do is we'll need to somewhere in this mess here um, on dying state is exactly what we're after here uh, we will say maybe let's put it right at the bottom we'll say um, get tree actually I don't I, I don't think that's going to work so what we could try actually is get get parent node 3d there we go that should work because it's being added I believe almost directly to the uh, uh, to the root. Now I don't love this, right? Because you can probably see that we could end up in a situation where we don't know what children are doing what. But if we just do get parent node dot three d dot cash, uh, sorry dot get node uh, main dot cash plus equals enemy settings dot uh, what do we call it? Destroy value. Let's take a look and see if that's correct. I'm not 100% sure I'll get that get no 3D. Uh, that could be wrong. Let's just give it a quick go. Let's try and start the wave. <clears throat> no. 
no, it hasn't increased it. Okay, so so it's it's so I thought. Oh, here we go. It's throwing errors. Why didn't it throw the error the first time? Let me just try. I don't love this. Let me just try um, that. Uh, get parent no three D dot cache. <laughs> Let's just try that. I, I might I might try and tidy that up a little bit so it's a bit cleaner. Let's just give that a go. Okay, click on start wave. All right, hopefully this will be kind. No, it hasn't. Hang on. So now it's updated it after the second one, but not the first one. It seems to be working for every subsequent one. So why is it not working on the first enemy? That is curious. But every all the others seem to be okay. All right, let's take a look into why that might be. Sorry, I can see what it obviously is. <laughs> it's it, it is actually adding it, but it's waiting until that um, explosion audio is finished. So we need to um, just stop it. There we go. Uh, we need to put it above the the awaits here. Let's just put it right up the top here. Uh, maybe after those two, that's the place to put it. I think it was working. It was just waiting for the audio to finish. But we've been caught by out by that before, haven't we? Let's have another look. <clears throat> here we go. And click start wave. There we go. That's better. There we go. Now we can add one in. Now, like I said, I haven't really, haven't really optimized this in any way, and you may want to go play around with this and get it to, to, to your liking so it's a little bit more difficult to just blast the hell out of these guys. Maybe just add more of them or something or make them tougher. You know, you can balance this as you, as you play. But there we go. And then we can click on Start Wave now. I can put at least two more down, right, which is, which is too many, right? We shouldn't be able to put two down. I think four is more than enough to take these guys out. And now we can afford, afford another one. Look, so you get the idea. You get the idea what we're trying to do here. This is really rather good. So I hope that made sense. I hope, um, as always, I will put the code on GitHub uh, for you to enjoy and play around with and uh, uh, see what you can do. See if you can make a better job of it than I did. Um, I will be putting together a tutorial on particle explosions. I've, I've been spending a lot of time looking at that, and I will, I'm will. i planning on doing like a sort of a, a two-part master course on it, one where we go through all of the basics, and the second part where we go through some of the, uh, the, more, the more complex settings that you can get in particles. It doesn't seem to be a, a kind of definitive tutorial out there, and... I th uh, you know, I th the documentation is great, but I know a lot of people appreciate seeing the uh, actual um, in action and understanding what each thing does rather than uh, having to go you know, trudge through the code. So look out for that. That's probably coming up next. But thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, shark out.